Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, guys, this is Bruce Marshall from Simpler Trading with the nightly market update for Wednesday, August the 14th. So happy Wednesday, happy hump day, and happy CPI day. We had um, the CPI report that came in before the market opened this morning and um, thought it was going to give us a lot more clarity. We're going to look at some charts in a second, but I thought that would you know, give us a lot more clarity in it. And it really has not. Um, we'll go. In, we'll jump in and look at this uh, at the charts here in just a second. But um, I've got the Nasdaq here. Here's the RUT uh, or the Russell, and then my tick chart. But um, this is what I want to show you. This is the. You see that right there? That was CPI, and CPI came in in line. Um, right where it was, you know, where the estimates were that it would come in. And I'm reading, you know, during the day and after the market, and, and I'm reading, you know, this this confirms that the Fed's going to do this and this, and I'm, you know, and I'm scratching my head going, it, it doesn't confirm anything. It came in exactly in line with where everyone thought that it would come in, and it did, you know. So didn't come in hot, didn't come in cold, that kind of thing. If it would have come in a little bit cooler, uh, that would have been more of a, of a bullish case, uh, in my opinion. But, um, you know, it, it, it didn't. And what I'm comparing that to is, one, the last, you know, we've been watching this very closely for the last, I don't know, six months, 12 months, something like that. Um, but if we go back over here, and this was yesterday, so this is this. Uh, you see that candle right there? That's PPI, and that's CPI. So PPI came in yesterday, and we're off like a rocket. It's straight up this thing, you know, boom, 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 bye, 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 and then very flat overnight. This light crazy overnight session, and then when CPI came out today. I expected follow through and we would go up here, but instead we immediately womp womp kind of came down here and then we kind of got going and then kind of gave it back and kind of ended up, I think we ended up about 20 points on the ES. Um, so, you know, obviously this CPI number was, um, I wouldn't say disappointing at all, but I would say it was non-eventful and that all this, all any kind of major move had already been built in because I thought if this number came in, um, favorable or cooler, you know, we got almost a hundred points here. We could get another hundred points, you know, straight up. And this thing is off to the races, right? And why is that so important? You know, CPI, PPI, those are inflation gauges and everyone is focused on inflation and the labor market too. You know, jobs reports can be coming up pretty soon. Um, to give the Fed the data that they need to make a decision on a rate cut. And if you've listened to me for any length of time, you know, we've been talking about this for a long time. And I thought it was crazy last year that the market was pricing in. And remember last year, if you've been trading for any length of time, you you know, last year when we were looking at this, um, last year and the market was saying, you know, we're going to get three rate cuts by the end of the year and like six rate cuts this year, something crazy. And I was like, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. And we still don't have a rate cut yet. This was a year and a half ago, probably when all this really kind of intensified. But um, so now the big question is, so this is uh, August, right? There is no, there's no Fed, there's no Fed meeting in August. There's one in September on the 18th, right? And the big question is, you know, the Fed, we're going to cut rates, we're going to cut rates, we're going to cut rates. And um, the market it has been so sure we're going to get a rate cut, you know, that we've gotten this, massive massive move um right here from 4100 to 5700 in the es you know and and that's there are things obviously earnings and things are you know good um economy is good and all that kind of stuff for, for the most part um but that's a whole lot of movement and most of that is based on the fed's going to cut rates next meeting next meeting next meeting and it just hasn't happened right well if you to to twist the plot even further this is what we watch is the fed watch tool and you know we have been pricing in or, or anticipating a 25 basis point one you know quarter of one percent um, cut for like i said at least over a year now 
and now the market uh, before today was actually pricing in 50 basis point cut here. This is 25 basis point here, 0.25, and this is 0.50. This number uh, yesterday was 53%, and now it's dropped to 43% today after the the uh, CPI number came in a, a calm number, right? This went down, this went up, so the you know the expectations for 25 basis point rate cut that's only a 56 percent chance so that's almost a coin toss right um, this will change and I'm sure this probably will go up a little bit more and this will probably come down a little bit more because this is to me this is off the table they're not going to do 50 basis points you know smart my words and uh, I may eat those words but um, I don't see it happening and you know the Fed was very slow to the party uh, to raise rates. Remember, um, inflation is transitory and all that kind of. They got it completely wrong, right? Um, so I, I don't. And you know, if I'm in the Fed's position, if I'm in Powell's position, there's no reason for him to act too quickly and make a misstep. He didn't want to do that, right? So I, I just don't think we get 50 basis points, and I'm pretty skeptical that we even get 25. I think they could kick the can a little bit longer. Um, you know, down the road and, and see. So how will we know? Well, one, we can wait till it happens uh, in September, but the uh, the other things is, that are going to tell us tomorrow morning, we have retail sales. Um, that's going to be pretty important. How's the consumer doing? You know, that kind of stuff. Um, the 30th, we have PCE, which really that's the preferred inflation gauge of the Fed, personal consumption expenditures. Um, they rely pretty heavily on that. I like CPI, they like PCE, but um, that'll be a biggie uh, on the 30th. And we have Jackson Hole meeting on the 30th as well. Um, so we'll know a lot, a lot more. We'll have more clarity by then. Oh, and then, um, I forgot, so the next Friday, uh, following that, we have uh, payrolls, you know, very important. This one's going to be very important, you know, to to see if they um, if they those indicate or raise the likelihood of a rate cut and all that kind of stuff, you know. But again, remember keep your keep your eye on that September 18 uh, meeting, and you know how do you plan for that? And you know we I have been uh, we've been setting up hedges and all this kind of stuff. If you're in the uh, simpler trading community, you know right here uh, the day before this high, I put on a hedge uh, in the SPY. And uh, we already t we've already taken it off uh, on this big flush down. We took it off. It was not actually not for that. It was for this. The expiration date was 20 September, which is two days after 18 September when the Fed's going to meet. It was a hedge on the downside uh, in anticipation of you know maybe what if things don't go right. And instead, we got this big flush much earlier than I thought. Uh, so we took it off. Now on this run back up, we took it off actually kind of on the way back up right here. It's actually when we crossed the 34 uh, EMA or SMA. And I'm actually looking to reset it. I'm not going to use the same expiration. I'm not going to use the same strikes. But, um, you know, there are things you can do to prepare for events like that. And, um, you know, just kind of get ready. And it's not very, you know, it's not expensive. That trade was a buck sixty. Uh, when we bought it, we sold it for five seventy, I think, five sixty five, five seventy five, something like that. Um, anyway, there are a lot of things you can do like that. Also, keep in mind, um, we're and it's a little early. I'm going to be setting up stuff for the election, no matter which way it goes. You know, no matter which side of the aisle you're on, is going to go up, it's going to go down. Who knows? Uh, but we'll set up bullish trades. We'll set up bearish trades, and you know that kind of thing. Um, so if you want any help in doing that, and I'm actually doing a class on that coming up pretty soon. Um, if you need help with that, or curious, or, or want to know more, let me know. Um, or uh, simpler and we can give you some more detail on that but um, but think about that whether you do or not think about it you know and how it's going to affect your portfolio if something crazy happens good or bad you know the Fed does cut rates this the market's going to rip higher and depending on you know which way you're thinking politically on the election we could go much higher we could really go much lower you know it just it's it's we're in some kind of um, weird territory right now not weird but we're in a lot of um, obviously a lot of volatility I personally think there is more risk to the downside here and let me show you real quick and then I wind it up uh, if we look here we uh, so we're we're coming back up into these 34 
uh, EMAs right here. You tend to get rejected off this and you know, and do one of those kind of deals typically. Now that where it's a little bit, di you know, it's different this time, um, but typically like over here, let me show you this real quick. Um, right here, when you cross down under, when you get going again, now we did cross back above uh, for a little bit and then we came back down, took out that low, bounced, took out that low, bounced, took out that low before we finally recovered. And, you know, this is just from the technical side, from the chart side, um, there are a whole lot of other factors right now with, you know, inflation going to be hot or, or cool, or jobs reports going to be good or bad, is the Fed going to cut rates or not, who's going to win presidential election, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's good news for us, you know, because we can trade the volatility. But, um, but again, you got to be nimble and think ahead is the whole point uh, about what you want to, your goal for your, your trade or your portfolio and do you want to hedge or not uh, and do you want to hedge on the upside or do you want to hedge on the downside and you know that's questions everyone has to ask themselves so with that let me wind it up again if you need help or have questions let me know um, at simpler trading I, I'm in the main room all the time I'm in the bias room every day and um, be glad to help so thanks for your time guys I appreciate it and I will talk to you soon take care Without simpler trading, I could not have financial independence. This is one of the best investments that I ever made in my life. It's helping me find consistency. It's one of the things that won me over.